from reports of phantom schooners sighted along dark coastlines making scheduled appearances that all might witness, to some of the most infamous spectral vessels known to man, straight out of legends and lore long forgotten. Are you ready to delve into the history and horror surrounding five real ghost ships? Number 5. The Lady Lovabond the Lady Lovabond is a phantom three-masted schooner purported to appear once every 50 years on the dot at Goodwin Sands, off the coast of Kent in England, a stretch still considered to be one of the most dangerous and unforgiving passages on the English Channel, and that's claimed over a thousand documented vessels since 1298. As a collaboration of stories and legends have it, in 1748, one Captain Simon Reed, by some accounts Simon Peel, would marry a young woman by the name of Annetta. On February 13th, Simon would set sail to Portugal, accompanied by his new bride and crew. It's said that many of his crew members were superstitious, and that having a woman aboard made them uneasy. Unbeknownst to Simon, his first mate, one John Rivers, who'd stood as his best man at the wedding, secretly harbored feelings for Annetta. It's said that on the journey, he was slowly driven mad from jealousy. As the couple was celebrating below deck, entertaining their guests and crew, Rivers attacked and possibly killed the crew member tending the wheel. He then steered the ship into Goodwin Sands, resulting in its wreckage and the deaths of everyone on board. Though there is no historic documentation supporting this legend or anything like it ever transpiring, the earliest rendition of this sea tale sprouted up mysteriously as an anonymous publication on Valentine's Day in 1924, and later again in George Goldsmith's book, The Goodwin Sands, in 1953, the original publication strangely placing the shipwreck in 1724 just over two decades earlier than our modern 1748. Despite its classification as nothing more than a fiction, many continue to flock to the sands in hopes of sighting the lady. If our modern legend actually holds true, her next appearance should land on February 13th of 2048. The story of the Lady Lovabond was supposedly birthed exactly 50 years following her wreckage, when the captain of the ship, the Edinburgh, reported almost colliding with a spectral schooner in 1798. When his vessel neared the schooner, he and his crew described hearing boisterous music and the sounds of a party on deck, before suddenly, the ship broke into pieces and vanished into the waters. The incident appeared so real, rescue teams were sent out, but no sign of the schooner or her crew were ever Ever discovered. The same phenomenon occurred again in 1848, and once more in 1898, before the lady's pattern was taken note of. In 1948, when Captain Bull Presswick was convinced he was viewing an actual physical ship off the sands, but was informed by crew that it was simply the love of bond. He described the vessel as being enveloped in a dense green fog or glow. In 1998, hundreds flocked to the Goodwin Sands area in hopes of catching a glimpse of the Lovabond, but were sent home disappointed as, for the first time in nearly three centuries, it never appeared, leaving some to ponder, did its crew finally find their peace? Number 4. The Caliuche the Caliuche is a large ghost ship said to appear faithfully every night around Chiloé Island off the southern coast of Chile that boasts its reputation, along with its place in one of the most important tales from Chilota mythology. The first humans to arrive on Chiloé, which holds the mantle of being the largest island in the Chiloé archipelago, arrived more than 7,000 years ago. With the first Spaniard to sight the island, an explorer by the name of Alonso de Camarago, doing so in 1940 and out to Peru. In 1553, the spit of land would be officially discovered by Francisco de Ulloa. In 1558, Spanish soldier Garcia Hurtado de Mendoza would claim the Chiloé archipelago in the name of the Spanish crown, and by 1567, the city of Castro would be officially founded. Through the 17th century, the island was savagely looted by pirates. In 1767, Chiloé separated from Chile, coming under subjection of the Viceroyalty of Peru. In 1818, Chile declared its independence from Spain, and in 1826, Chiloé would go on to rejoin the Chilean Republic. Over the years, whispers among locals began telling of a ghostly ship, said to be conscious and sentient, that would appear on quiet nights under full moons, emerging from a mysterious fog. The Caliuche is said to appear as a beautiful and bright white sailing ship, boasting three masts of five sails each. 
Those who've witnessed her often describe the deck as being full of lights or hearing the sounds of a party on board. As she remains visible for only moments before vanishing into the night, not dissimilar to the infamous Flying Dutchman, the Caliuche is said to possess the ability to submerge and navigate underwater, its ghostly crew unburdened by the mortal requirement for oxygen, as she seeks out the souls of those who've been drowned at sea. Conversely to the Dutchman, however, her intent is anything but sinister in nature. According to the Chilota mythos, the spirits of the drowned are then carried back to the ship by Serena Chilota, her sister Pinkoya, and their brother Pinkoy, all three children of Mia Lobo, king of the sea. Once the spirits are recovered, legend furthers to state they are able to continue their existence on the ship in an eternal party. Some versions of this legend state that those on board are allowed to return to land once a year to see and help their families for a short time, and that when they stop showing up, it's usually because they've made some sort of deal, committed an act against the seas, or have found the peace to move on. In other mythology, the Caliuche is visited frequently by Brujo de Chilote, or a type of wizard or sorcerer that summon and ride Caballo Marino Chilote, or creatures with a likeness to large water horses that can only be seen by others with magical gifts. While some theorize stories of the Caliuche could have simply Simply risen from sightings of some of the first ships to explore the Atlantic, this speculation has been quickly dismissed even into recent times by a host of sailors who have reported the old vessel leading them from storms to the safety of port where she promptly vanishes. Lastly, the legend of the Caliuche isn't all fun and games, and a number of tales tell of fishermen or unworthy sailors being kidnapped and forced to work as its crew for all eternity. Number 3. The Flying Dutchman The Flying Dutchman is a legendary ghost ship that, as the story goes, can never make port, is doomed to sail the seas for all eternity, and whose appearance is said to act as a sort of bad omen to any near. Though the Dutchman has been sighted all across the globe, in nearly every body of water, even over some deserts, the most frequent area of encounter for this phantom vessel is said to lie just off the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. Maritime history, dating back tens of thousands of years, tells of when the maritime trade was dominated by the Austronesian peoples, who held early trade routes by around 1500 BCE between Sri Lanka, India, and Southeast Asia. With the rise of the spice trade across Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, the Dutch East India Company was established in 1602 to protect Dutch trade throughout the Indian Ocean. Cape Good Hope was first settled in 1652 by the Dutch, who established a colony to serve the Dutch East India Company. Over time, the colony expanded and old maritime sea tales were passed down, one of the more commonly uttered fables being that of the Flying Dutchman. The first printed reference to the legend appeared in 1790 and told that the ship was the specter of one that had been caught off the Cape in bad weather, and that, ever since, would appear in the very storms that led to its untimely fate. Over the following centuries, a number of writers, poets, and artists embellished upon the legend, even associating it with real history. To some, 17th century Dutch captain Bernard Folk was used as a model for, or as the actual captain to the Dutchman. Folk was known for his speedy trips and was even rumored to be in league with the devil for his otherworldly haste. These legends tell that Folk became lost at sea, challenged the devil, and as an outcome was doomed to forever sail the Cape. The first version of this legend was printed in Blackwood's Edinburgh Magazine in 1821, though this story provided the name Captain Hendrik van der Decken as the captain of the cursed vessel lost in a storm circa 1641. The legend of the Flying Dutchman has been adapted into art, literature, television shows, high-end movie productions, and more. While the most popular and generalized rendition of the story tells the captain, whoever he or she may be, of the Flying Dutchman essentially gets lost in a storm, bets their soul, and is sentenced to sail forever. Others claim the actual story involved murder committed by the ship's crew, and that a plague caused ports to close to the ship, damning them all to the Dutchman's fate. A Germanic version of the legend has the captain penned as Herr von Falkenberg, condemned after a game of dice against the devil for his soul, while other variants tell the captain of the Dutchman is allowed to return to the shore every seven, or by some accounts, ten years, and that if he finds the true love of a woman, it might just set him free. Account 
countless number of Dutchman sightings have been reported over the years, including a notable encounter made by Prince George of Wales, future king, who spied the vessel in 1881 off the coast of Australia in the Bass Strait. In 1939, beachgoers sighted the Dutchman off the South African coast as it sailed steadily out to sea for a time before vanishing into thin air. Due to the high number of Dutchman encounters reported, many have tried to explain this notorious vanishing ship away as either optical illusions or some form of mass hallucination, but others state it's simply the Dutchman, more than capable of underwater travel, submerging herself from the view of the living as she ferries the souls of those who've drowned at sea to the other side. Number 2. The Palatine Light the Palatine Light is a flaming spectral ship reported near Block Island in Rhode Island that's thought to be the ghostly remnants of the historical 18th century shipwreck of the Princess Augusta, which would later be referred to as the Palatine in Legends and Fables. Block Island, located in the Block Island Sound, about 9 miles south from mainland Rhode Island and 14 miles east of Montauk Point in New York, is an island that was originally inhabited by the Niantic and that was settled through the 17th century century by European immigrants. In August of 1738, the Princess Augusta departed from Rotterdam, holding an estimated 240 heads, with more recent findings raising that count to as many as 364, those unchecked mostly women and children. Sailing under the command of Captain George Long with a crew of 14 and a ship full of passengers hailing from the Palatinate region of Germany, the princess set her sights on Philadelphia. Through the duration of the journey, more than half the ship's passengers and crew, as well as the captain himself, died of sickness resulting from a contaminated water supply. Command was taken over by first mate Andrew Brooke, who began charging the remaining passengers for rations, leading to the poorest among them dying of starvation and thirst. Further in, the ship underwent a battery, courtesy of foul weather, and on the afternoon of December 27th, became trapped in a snowstorm off Sandy Point, on the northern end of Block Island. Brooke took his remaining crew and their valuables to shore, but abandoned the rest of the passengers, many of whom were rescued by island locals. Amidst rescue efforts, many attempted to swim to shore, and at least 20 lost their lives and were buried near. As history furthers, it's not exactly certain what became of the physical ship itself. Some say it was torn apart and sank to the bottom of the ocean, others that it was set ablaze and pushed to sea, and others still that it was repaired and continued on to Philadelphia, where it was lost into obscurity. The legend of the spectral burning ship was made famous in a John Greenleaf Whittier poem titled The Palatine. Whittier had first heard the legend of the ghost ship in 1865 and had his poem published in the Atlantic Monthly in 1867. In 1947, the Block Island Historical Society placed a sign marking the approximate location of the Palatine graves. Block Island has presented a hazard to ships in the area since its expanse was first traversed and, as a result, gained infamy as a haven for pirates and looters. This led to stories surrounding the princess being twisted, or to versions where islanders were portrayed as evil, antagonistic. Some tales even told that the islanders lured the ship in with false lights, causing their wreck, others that they killed and pillaged survivors, though we know today the reality was quite the opposite. Several prominent fables tell of a woman named Mary Vanderlein that was aboard the princess. It's said Mary was driven mad by her suffering and refused to leave her belongings behind, even as it was being lit ablaze and pushed out to sea. It's said her screams were heard from ashore as the ship burned and eventually sank into the ocean. A year after the wreck, on the very same day, what looked to be a flaming ship appeared just off the island's north shore, causing panic among those present, a blood-curdling scream emanating from it as it sank below the waters. Some attempted to row out and reach the ship to help, but found the water completely empty upon nearing its supposed destination. This phenomenon was experienced the following year and each concurrent year after that up into present times. Number 1. The Queen Anne's Revenge 
The Queen Anne's Revenge is an early 18th century ship most famous for its utilization as the flagship of Edward Thatch or Teach, better known as the Dread Pirate Blackbeard. That's ghostly silhouette has been sighted near Beaufort Inlet in North Carolina each year, and that's thought to hold the apparitions of not just Edward, but of his entire fearsome crew from life. Thought to have been constructed in 1710 as La Concorde, the Queen Anne's Revenge was first owned by French merchant René Montadouin and was operated as a slaving vessel on three separate expeditions in 1713, 1715, and in 1717. Little did its crew know their third trip would be cut short, no pun intended, about a hundred miles from the island of Martinique by Blackbeard and his men split between two vessels. The French were greatly outnumbered and quickly surrendered to Teach and his men. Blackbeard and his forces would then proceed to the island of Bequia, dropping the French slavers ashore. It's recorded that four of the Frenchmen refused to leave and joined Blackbeard's cause by their own accord, while ten others were convinced through different displays of force. Contrary to the often brutal portrayals of Teach, when all was said and done, he actually left those who hadn't joined him the smaller of the two original ships to allow for them to make their way home. Blackbeard went on to rename his new prize vessel the Queen Anne's Revenge and repurposed it as his flagship for a series of Caribbean raids. In April of 1718, the Dread Pirate captured the Adventure, a sloop captained by David Harriet, and forced her to join his ranks. In May of the same year, in what many consider his boldest move, Blackbeard's forces arrived off the coast of Charleston, blockading the harbor, taking hostages, and demanding medicine, many suspect for STIs present among the crew. In June of 1718, the Queen Anne's Revenge, along with the Adventure, ran aground on a sandbar at Beaufort Inlet off the coast of North Carolina. After repeated failed attempts to free the vessels, Blackbeard ordered all valuables be loaded onto two remaining ships before sailing away, leaving many of his former crew stranded. While this incident was thought to be accidental in origin, it has more recently been theorized that Blackbeard did this on purpose to ensure larger cuts among his most trusted. Blackbeard was eventually pardoned and would go on to become a privateer on the adventure, but would quickly return to piracy. He was killed in a daring assault by Lieutenant Robert Maynard off Ocracoke Island in November of 1718. In 1996, a shipwreck was discovered about a mile offshore from Fort McCone State Park, and after years of excavation and study of the artifacts found on board, in 2011, the National Geographic Society officially confirmed it to be the remains of none other than the Queen Anne's Revenge. A ghostly ship matching the Queen Anne's Revenge has been sighted all around her wreckage, as well as along famous routes Blackbeard was known to have traveled in life. Many describe her as being manned by a ghostly crew, all seemingly high in spirits, with Blackbeard himself at the wheel, beard alight with match, his face covered in an otherworldly glow, like a demon from hell itself as he bellows out orders, his crew chanting back in affirmation. Also reported are instances in which the pirates' voices, or old-timey music, are heard over open waters, and disturbing accounts of modern vessels catching strange blips seemingly chasing them on their radars closing in. Lastly, the Queen Anne's Revenge has been known to appear suddenly, seemingly trying to ram unsuspecting ships, while terrifying everyone aboard, before disappearing inches from impact. Taking into consideration its fascinating and notable history, and coupling it with a slew of legends and ghostly encounters sure to leave even the bravest sailors with nightmares, we felt there really was no better choice than the Queen Anne's Revenge to close out this countdown. Thank you all for tuning in to our list of picks for 5 Real Ghost Ships. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and scary stories as much as we enjoyed telling them to you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you know when fresh content is on the way. Throw us a like if you feel we've earned it, and most importantly, share this video and our channel with anyone you think deserves a good scare. We'll see you all next time.